Okay, so we've got a basic working parser. Uh, it's got quite a bit of cut and paste in it, uh, which is never a nice thing, so we'll fix that. Um, but there's also a number of additional combinators from the, the library that we can illustrate by, um, by simplifying what we have here. Um, so you certainly would have noticed that the expression and term parsers are very similar. We could just go ahead and, and, and abstract over the things that are different between these two, namely the term, the character that we're looking at, and the add thing, and build a single function for that. But actually there is a, there is a common pattern inside of this which is much more widely um, useful. And that is when you want to parse a repeated a bunch of things all separated by some kind of separator. Uh, and the natural thing then is to parse them as a list, a list of those things, which you can then process. And in this case, we're processing them by folding them all together with a left associative fold operation. So uh, there is a library function that, that does that, and it's called chain. So you give it a parser for a thing. I've called it an item here. This is just a, this is just a type variable, of course. Uh, so parser for an item, parser for the separator between the items, and then you get a list of one or more items. So it requires one or more. Uh, and that's the pattern we have here. We, we parse one and then we parse the rest. So we're going to follow the, the, the code here and I can even, well, okay, I'll, I'll rewrite it from scratch because I'm going to rename the variables. But basically I start by parsing an item i using the item parser. That's like the first line of a factor example, for example. Then I get a bunch of items by um, doing zero or more. Um, and zero or more, we're going to do the following two things. Um, we're going to parse using the separator parser, and then we're going to parse using the item. So this will give us an item, and we're going to get zero or more items. And then what we return is just all of the items that we found. So that's the chain operator, um, which, um, which we can use up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of I'm taking the term as the example one, this is, we're going to compute this using a chain of uh, factors uh, separated by the, using the parser char star. So this will and this will result in a list of a parser for a list of factors with one or more factors in it. And what we want to do is take that list of factors with one or more in it and combine them all together into a, a single expression uh, using the fold. So one thing we could do is we could pattern match in this to pull out the first element and the rest and use this expression here. But there's a slightly more direct way, namely to use a function called foldL1, which is similar to foldL, but it doesn't have a base case. It assumes the list has at least one element in it, as indeed this list will have the, the list uh, parsed by this guy. So we're going to do a foldL1 using the mul uh, uh, operator uh, to combine everything and of course we can't apply this directly to this whole thing here we can only f map it because this thing here is a parser for lists of expressions and this thing is wanting a list of expressions so that would be the, uh, the, the simplification for terms and expressions will be simplified similarly and this is the only legitimate cut and paste that we will be doing uh, namely um, just for the one-liner um, separated by the plus. So I can move this stuff out of the way. Oh, let's delete it all together. We, we get the, the gist of it from this particular example here. Um, and now we can introduce a few more of the other little goodies in the library. Uh, we've looked at chain uh, from the library. Um, so let me see. Just let me compile that before we, we go on make sure they're nice and tight. Very good. Okay. All right, so um, one of the basic things that we often do uh, in parsers is, is parse one thing after another. And in fact, we use we do indeed use the do notation for that. But there are also a couple of functions that will allow us to explicitly um, um, deal with cases where we parse one thing after the other, but ignore one of them. For example, here, we first parse uh, a, um, a single open bracket. And then we parse an expression, but we've kind of ignored what we've done here. So we've sort of parsing something, thrown, thrown the result away, and then carried on parsing this, and then we throw the result of this away. So there are in fact two operators in the library, um, which which will make that a little bit easy. So let me go grab the synopsis from the documentation here. And there are these two here. And again, the type is a little bit more general than um, than 
um, they're, they're just for parsers because they actually belong to another class as well. But for now, we think of f as being the parser uh, type constructor. And so this is, takes a parser for an A and a parser for B and gives you a parser for an A. So this sort of parses with the first parse, parser, then parses with the second, and then returns the result of the first parse. So it sort of ignores the second guy. So if we look in our example, we can see where we might actually use that. Um, and we can see that we can replace this guy. We're, we're sort of this guy, we're sort of ignoring the result of this guy and using the one from the previous instead. So this this whole section here, which I shall comment out, using those two combinators can be rewritten. And before I do that, maybe it's useful to just do a couple of examples on the on the command line. Um, so I'm going to parse using a, a parser. Um, so let's take a parser which parses the character left bracket. and a digit and apply that to something that starts with a left bracket and then has a digit, whatever. So let's apply it to that. So this one is the one that keeps the first thing and, and drops the second thing. So probably a more, a more meaningful example would have been if we do it this way around. The arrow points at the thing we're going to keep. So we pass the bracket and we pass the one but we've thrown the bracket away and just returned the one. So those are the, those are the two operators. So using those two operators, what we can do is we can parse a character, um, but we're going to keep the expression that we parse, and we're going to throw away, and then all the associativity will work out here, the char, the, the right bracket. So this do block here can be rewritten as this thing here. It says parse a left bracket, throw it away, and then parse an expression, and followed by a right bracket, but throw the right bracket away. So then you end up with a parser that returns an expression, and that guy in the middle. So there's a. So we can reduce also reduce that one to a, a one liner, and of course the, the the precedence of the operators has been chosen carefully to make this um, reasonably easy to write. Okay, so there's a, a, a so there's a, a, a nice simplification. We can actually use that simplification over here as well, um, yeah, rather than having a do block here we could have written um, we pass the separator but then keep the item and, uh, and there are a few more um, a few more basic building blocks in this style we, we won't look at them all um, there's one that, that puts an element on the front of a list we could have also used that um, to remove the do block from this guy um, I can show you what it looks like we could have written this as item on the front of zero or more set items. Um, so this parses a single item and parses zero or more items and then puts the result of this one on the front of the list produced by this one. Yeah, so not essential but uh, quite handy. Okay just to finish off let's uh, let's put this into action with a with a little top level use of the parser. So normally so we have a parser for expressions which allows us to parse expressions uh, with junk on the end. But when we actually use this in some application, then we're typically not going to uh, want to have any junk on the end. Um, and that would also correspond to an error. So let's see how we might use this. So I've written a little calculator here. Um, it doesn't do anything interesting just at the moment. If I run name, what would you like to calculate? I'd like to calculate 1 plus 2. Um, it's not implemented. Uh, neither, neither is multiplication. Um, um, so I'm going to replace this part by um, some actual code that does something useful. So I'm going to, um, this is the read, evaluate, print part of the loop. The loop is represented by this forever uh, combinator from, from control.mona. Uh, but it's an easy function to write. Okay, so uh, I've got a line that I've read from the user. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to allow the user to um, put spaces in. I want to go down here um, to put spaces in if they want to uh, without it crashing because our parser doesn't look at uh, care about spaces. So when I once I've got the string, I'm going to remove the spaces from the string. And because this is not a not a monadic computation, I'm just going to use a let. So the string without the spaces will be um, I'm going to filter not is space from the string s. So I've got all the all the um, characters which are not space characters. I've removed them first before I parse it. And then what I want to do is I want to, um, well, I'm going to calculate 
um, I'm going to parse the expression s prime, and then I need to inspect that to see whether it's worked out okay or not. So I'm going to do a case analysis on this in this guy, and if I get nothing, oh, okay, let me start with the the positive case. If it succeeds, I'm going to get an answer together with the rest of the string. Now the rest of the string I want to be empty because I don't want any junk to be typed at the end because that's not a valid expression. So here's where I capture that. I want to pattern match on answers that look like that. I get an answer, it's succeeded, and there's no junk on the end. And um, in that case, get my arrows the right way around, uh, in that case what I want to do is simply print the answer. So print remember is takes a thing that's print that, that has a show function that's in the show class and prints it on the screen. Otherwise, in any other case, I've either got junk or I've got nothing. I'm just going to say an invalid expression. So let's reload that file. Oh, I've got an error somewhere. Okay, so uh, classic error here. I'm treating my expression uh, parser as if it's a function, but it's actually not a function. It's a member of a, a data type called parser. So I have to remember to use the parse uh, function in order to be able to use that parser on this input. So let's try that again. Okay, now it works. Now I can, should be able to play the game. What do I want to calculate? Um, uh, 1 plus 3 times 4. Oh. Um, I'm printing out the actual data type. That's not what I wanted at all. I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to use the good old eval function. Have I got that written in my file? Yeah, there it is. I want to actually eval the answer. We'll get there eventually. So I want to eval the answer that I get. Um, uh, so let's try that again. Okay, so now I should be able to do 1 plus 2 times 3, um, which gives me 7, but actually I, what I meant to write was that. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so now we have a calculator and if I type some stuff that's not a value, it just tells me I've got an invalid expression. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't crash. I can do weird things like lots of brackets, um, because that's still a perfectly okay expression, uh, even if it's got brackets you don't need. Um, but what I can't do is start with some other junk, junk character or indeed end with any junk characters. <laughs>